Ooh, ooh, artist, now you've finished a painting. Well, in this case, maybe it's not a finished painting, but we're gonna, for demo sakes, pretend like it is. Here's the thing. You glazed it. You did all your details. You even varnished it. Remember, we've got a video for that. But now what? You've got this work on canvas, and how do you finish it? We've got white edges. Some artists love to wrap the painting around the edges, and you know what? That's purely your choice. So if you want to, while you're painting, go ahead and keep bringing that paint around the edges. I, however, really like to keep all my edges uh, a nice neutral tone. So what I've done is I've gone to the hardware store, picked out a couple of sample size, and had them make paint that I can replicate every single time. I want the exact same color, which is a nice warm gray. Not black, not white, a nice warm gray, because it goes with everything. And here's the thing, if I'm going to go show these in a gallery, which I've done many times in the past, it's been a while, I know folks, it's great when they all hang together and there's this one cohesive element, which is nice gray sides. So here's my trick to this. You could tape it all off and you can be all special and careful. But what I like to do, so I've gotten the edge here, right? I saw this really great technique that helps you get the edge just perfect. I'm going to show you. You just take it. This takes a little practice. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way because if I if I have my painting this way and I go and I accidentally dab it, well, you can get some water really quick and a rag and wash it off, but you don't want to ruin your brand new painting you just did. So turn it this way and then take your brush after you've dipped it in the paint, right? And you take your brush and you pull the painting, the paint just right up to the edge and it gives it a perfect, perfect edge. No taping necessary. No trying to paint a straight line. Just a nice, perfect edge. Now, you know you got to wait until this thing is dry before you can keep turning the edges. So I can probably get two sides. I've got this one done. I can turn and get this one. Ooh, look, there's a little bit of white. There we go. Turn this, get this side done, and then i got to let it dry. I do like them up on their edges like this. And if they're smaller, sometimes I'll hold them. The really big ones, I just put down my drop cloth and get going. Here I am. I'm not worried what happens on the back side. I'm just going to go ahead, paint down the edges here. I'm not going all the way to the edge there. I'm just paint down, make it sure it gets nice into those corners. And then it's time for me to, to get this other side. I'm not turning my painting around because I don't want paint on this side, right? So I'm just going to hold this as the dry side here. There's no paint on this side. So I'm holding it here and I'm taking my brush and I'm just pulling it straight that's why we have this nice flat brush, right? Just straight across. Now, you do this for all of your 10 paintings that you just finished in a collection. You wire them perfect, hang them up on the gallery wall or maybe your own house wall and make that your gallery and photograph it and they will all look cohesive because every edge will be painted that same exact color because you bought that from the Home Depot and it's a perfect match. How's that? Easy peasy, people. That's all you gotta do to finish off your edges. Artists, the painting is finished. Well, maybe not this one, but let's just say we've glazed, we've glossed, we've varnished, we've signed our name, we've painted the edges. Now it's time for putting the hooks on. And let me tell you, this is one of those things that I really want you to get right because as somebody who's had to host some gallery shows, boy, can I tell you how frustrating it is when that work is just not wired right. So make sure that you've signed your name in pencil on the back of your work. Why am I going to do it in pencil on the canvas? Hmm. Date it, don't date it. It's your choice. I can put the date on it. I can put the title on it here. Unfinished work, right? I'm putting it on the canvas because this is something I learned. I used to write here on the edges and I could put my name nice put all the info right here until one day I sold my work and the gentleman who bought it took the canvas off the stretcher and framed it and there was no longer my signature or my information with the work. So always write it on the canvas in pencil. Put on your name, your date, whatever information you feel is best to complete the work. Now we're going to go ahead and wire. What do we need for wiring? You need a ruler and a pencil, some wire cutters, and then this awesome wire right here. This one's called Super Soft Strand. I'm going to give you all the links to everything. It's really up to you what you prefer, but I like this because it's plastic coated. That means it's really easy to work with. doesn't leave uh, marks on your hands or on the wall. 
yeah, this is my favorite. And this is also what they use in the galleries and the framing stores that I've worked in before. And then we need what's called, oftentimes called a D-ring. These are the easiest to work with. They're like a little loop on a metal uh, hinge here. And we're going to screw them in with screws. And how are you going to do that? Well, this wood is actually soft enough. If you would like to use a screwdriver, that's totally fine. But me, I invested in my own power drill. All right, so here's how we're going to do it. Turn your work around so that the part you're working with is closest to you. Take your measuring, figure it out. This is 10 inches. I need about one third. It does not have to be exact, but we want to go about one third down. So that's maybe about three and a half inches. Uh, and that way, when you've measured and you've got your mark here, we're going to be able to keep that track of that on both sides just fine. Three and a half inches. There we go. You can see that, right? So we know exactly where we're going to be drilling those D-rings with the screws. And I'm just going to put that right up to the side so that's falling off the edge there. But like I said, this is very soft wood. I'm pushing it right in. It's a little tricky. A little practice and you'll get it. This really, some might have done hundreds of these now. And make sure it's going the right direction. There we go. Easy peasy, no problem. Now this wire, I've had this, it's, it's, I've wired like, oh, I don't know, probably 200 paintings by now. It lasts forever, this spool of wire. It'll just go and go and go. So this is how I do it. I start by doing one in without cutting because we wanna make sure we're getting the right amount, okay? So come through, come through again. We don't need a lot. Go through that little loop there. And then we're gonna tighten it down. We don't need a lot, look it. Just this little bit here. And if it's not perfectly tight, that's okay, because this is how we're gonna secure it. We're gonna take this, and we're gonna start wrapping it around until we've got this nice little coil. Do you see how I'm just kind of twisting it around the wire? It's very bendy, and that plastic keeps it from hurting your fingers. That's why I like the plastic one. There you go. Now, for my next, I know I only need about that much so I can clip it. My wire cutters, easy. We're gonna do the same. And now here's the thing. I don't need to leave a big, huge loop because this stuff stretches a little bit, makes it kind of hard to hang nice and flush if you have a big loop. So you really don't need to give it much leeway. There, that's enough right there. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Loop it through, come up through that hole, that little loop, loopity loop, pull it. Now that's it. See, that's not a lot of give, but it's just enough when you go to hang it, it'll be perfect. And that goes even for large paintings. Now I'm gonna spin this around till I have it nice and even on both sides. And that's probably enough wire. So if you have a little left, maybe you mismeasure, just trim that rest off and you are ready to go. Your painting is ready. You've done all the details. It's ready to ship. It's ready to take to the gallery. It's ready to hang on your wall and you're good to go. I recommend this, not those little gator clips that go up here with the teeth on it. Oh my goodness, the other things I've seen, cup hooks with fishing wire, staples, and you know, people get creative when they don't have the right supplies, but let me tell you, your customer or your gallerist is not gonna appreciate that too much. So do it right, order your stuff right off of Amazon, hang it, and you've got a good piece secure and ready to go to last a long time. That makes your work more valuable when it's finished just right.